what is technology and finance? So, personally, I think of technology as anything that empowers clients to make better decisions or improves their outcomes. It seems these days when you talk about fintech, people care about distributed ledgers. They want the new shiny thing. They want Bitcoin. They want blockchain. They want the rise of the robo-advisors and the automated advice market. But technology covers so much more than this. If you've got a Fitbit on your, on your wrist, we can use that for bespoke health insurance quotes, for personalized health management. If you've got a bank account, we can look at open banking transactional data for bespoke financial planning. We can use personalized financial management. But why do we care about any of this at all? As a few people have touched on, fundamentally, people do not make rational decisions. So technology provides a mechanism to provide the right intervention to the right clients at the right time in order to put those clients in a better position. So classic economics is based upon various assumptions. One of these is that people make rational choices. They don't. So if you need any proof of this, just look at the payday loan market. A few years ago, you could go and get a 200 pound payday loan for 4,000 or 7,000 percent APR. Now, whether or not this is a question of ignorance or arrogance, um, that's not for this talk, but for a lot of those people, that's not the right decision for them. So why are they doing it? So another prime example of this is given by Professor Harry Markowitz. He's the, uh, the Nobel laureate in 1990 for his work on, and he's the father of um, modern portfolio theory. So he's the guy who came up with efficient frontiers and diversifying risky, risky assets. But when he invested his own money, what he did was he visualized the grief of the stock market falling, he invested 50-50 assets and bonds. Decision he knew was irrational, it wasn't optimal for him, and still the brightest minds in the world don't do the right thing. So that's led to the advent of behavioral finance. As Will touched on earlier, last month Richard Thaler got the, got the Nobel Prize in economics for his work on nudge theory. But again, why do we care? What's this got to do with technology? Well, ultimately, over time, these irrational decisions add up. Over a long period of time, they lead to worse outcomes for the consumers, and the result of this is the savings gap. So technology helps us identify and quantify the savings gap. It also provides us with a great mechanism to provide an intervention for that and to fix that savings gap. So most of, in the, most of us in this room, we've got a pension probably, we work in the industry, but how many of us know if we're saving enough? Are we saving enough for the retirement that we want? A lot of people simply cannot answer this question. Technology provides us with a mechanism to answer this question. So at True Potential, since 2013, we've been engaging the state of the nation. We've analyzed the behavior of over 23,000 people over the last four years, and we've come up with some interesting findings. So for instance, the average person wants an income retirement of about 23,000 pounds, but they're only on track to receive 6,000 pounds. So there's this huge gap, but what can we do? We found that 50% of UK workers have a poor understanding of savings, one in five workers have less than a month's worth of expenses saved. So if they were to lose their job, what can they do? And on average, people waste 143 pounds per month that they later regret. So when we're talking about people just buying useless junk, that is the case. If that 143 pound a month, and that's four pounds 70 a day, was put into an auto enrollment pension from age 30 to 65, with basic rate tax relief, that could amass a pot of 400,000 pound. That's a comfortable retirement for 17 years. That's your retirement essentially funded just from that. But unfortunately, people don't want to do that. People find it easier than ever before to impulse spend. So as we transition to a cashless society, that's come up already, got things like chip and pin cards, contactless cards, wearables, you can pay with your phone, you've got an NFC chip in your, in your phone these days. It means that at the end of the day, there's, there's fewer pounds and, pounds and pennies in your wallet. It means when you go to put it in your, in your penny jar, it's just a lot smaller and you don't even notice this over time. So, as Will said earlier, you've got a nice plugin. We've got Impulse Save. We created that to make it even easier to save than it is to spend. Let's have a look. So, what can we do? Firstly, we can lower the barrier of entry. For instance, if I go to a high street bank, what I can do is I can go, I want a stocks and shares ISA. <coughs> a lot of the time, they don't want to give advice on that, and they'll say, no, we're not doing that. We'll give you a cash ISA instead. And it'll cost me £500 if I want a stocks and shares ISA. Millions of people in the UK, they simply don't have that £500 to even get on the ladder. They're stuck with cash in the bank, cash under the mattress. It might be in the safe, it might be in a jar at home. It's getting eroded by inflation every single day. That's 3% inflation. We've had two rate rises as well. So if you, if you consider that in the next, two year, well, the next two or three years, we've got another two interest rate rises coming, auto-enrollment contributions are going from 1% to 5%, people are squeezed. I mean, if you take an example of someone in auto-enrollment, someone who's 22 years old, 
If they're paying 5% of their employee contribution, 3% of their employer contribution, they're getting basic rate tax relief on that. If they work for 45 years, they could end up with an income, essentially, of £15,000. That's well below that target gap. So, how can they get where they want to be? Well, if they're 22, they'd have to put an extra £20 a month away. That's fairly straightforward. They're wasting £143 a month. We already know that. But if they're 30, suddenly that jumps to £150 per month. So how can we get that £150 a month? They don't have it, so where's it going to come from? And let's say they've been let down by the system. Let's say they're 40 years old. They don't have any pension provision as it stands, and they want to retire. That's £450 a month that they're going to have to find from somewhere in order to afford that retirement that they want. So where's that money going to come from? This is where fintech comes in. This is technology. Technology can make up that difference. So if you can now suddenly go to True Potential, you can open up a Stocks and Shares ISA from £50. You're welcome. You can then impulse save into that from £1. That £1, for, that'll go into a fully, a, an actively managed, fully diversified, risk-aligned portfolio. That's fantastic. And you can top that up on your terms. You can go online. You can give us a call. You can use the app. I'm going to demo that in a moment. But also, we can go further than that. We can provide personal financial management tools. So that's budgeting tools. That's bank account integrations. That's bank account aggregation <coughs> for free. So they, for the first time, a lot of our clients, they can see all of their finances. They can see their current account next to their investments. It enables them to manage their money more effectively. And for the first time, they can actually highlight these savings. And that's very, very powerful. It's very, very basic, but it's very, very powerful. And that, again, is the power of technology. Thirdly, using technology such as Plan and Invest, we can set financial goals for our clients. For the first time, we can give them a financial roadmap to, to say, this is where you are now, and this is where you want to be. So many different people want many different things. No two people are the same. There's never going to be a one-size-fits-all approach for all of this. So by putting the client in charge, by setting up their own roadmap, and providing them with the means and the technology to get there, we can really help improve their outcomes, and we can change millions of people's lives. And finally, we can go even further than that. So if we can remove the pain from saving, people don't want to notice that they're spending that money. If, you've, if you've, anyone here has got a contactless card, you'll notice you tap it, it goes through. You don't even realize you're spending the money. You might have a night out. You might, buy, you might buy a few rounds of drinks. You might just get the tube. It adds up. You don't even realize. It's removed the pain. There's a lot of research done by companies like Visa. You spend more money, you don't realize. So if we could leverage those technologies, those behaviors, that research, and use it for good, for savings, we can make a huge difference to people's lives. So wouldn't it be great if there was some technology where just you had a digital piggy bank every, every time you used your card from your £1.50 cup of coffee, that extra 50p just got, got rounded up to £2. That 50p went over to your pension, it went over to your ISA, went over to savings. Imagine that was for every transaction that you had. Wouldn't that be powerful? A digital piggy bank that grew over time, you didn't even have to think about on autopilot. Well, that's exactly what we're able to do. That's exactly what the True Potential Investor app does. So let's take a look, shall we? So if we just go to the True Potential Investor website, uh, you can log in. You can also go to the Apple Store. You can go to the Play Store. You can download this right now. I highly recommend that you check it out. So I'll just log in. Takes a second. And a lot of you have already seen this before. What, what you can see is it'll show you all of your finances in one place. So you can have your ICEs, your pensions, your GIAs, absolutely everything, all in one place. Um, you can view all of your messages on there. You can see all your paperwork. A lot of you have already seen all these sorts of things, so you can see, you can see everything on everything, and you can, you can track your investments against your goal, and um, you can impulse save at that from a pound. So again, a lot of people will have a few pounds and pennies sat around at home. They might even have it in the bank account. It's so tempting to just spend that money. You've got a couple of pounds. You'll go, I'll grab, I'll grab some lunch. Now you can just open this up. You can press a button, and instead of, instead of impulse spending that, you can impulse save it. So we have someone at work. They stop smoking, £6.67 a day goes into that investment. And bearing in mind, when you're putting £4.70 pounds per day away, that's your retirement funded for. That is a huge difference to people's lives. So if we go to the personal finance, finance tool, right, this is our budgeting, budgeting uh, and bank account integration tool. First time you do this, you're going to have to link your bank account or bank accounts. So perhaps you've got a savings account with one provider. I've moved some money around. The, the interest rate got raised. My bank didn't increase the interest rate. I moved my money. I've got my current account for my salary, that's, that's elsewhere. Some people might have a mortgage with a third provider. We can pull all of that together. Perhaps you've got children, they're financially independent now. You might, they might be at university. 
you might want to see what they're doing. You might want to set up, set up trans transaction rounding up for them. You can pull all of their finances together. But if your spouse has a, a separate bank account, you keep your finances separate. You can view everything holistically here. It's absolutely fantastic. So as you can see, everything gets broken down. Nice and straightforward. If we go to our expenses, um, as I said, I've been moving money around. It doesn't work too well for that. Um, but when it loads, we'll be able to see everything is categorized into budgets. So once, all, once everything's linked up, everything gets categorized automatically into income, expenses, and savings. What you can see is you can see exactly where you're spending your money and how. And that's absolutely fantastic. It's the first time a lot of clients have been able to see this, this in this way. And it's really, really effective. So if I just want to see how much I've been spending on food, I can just press food. And I can see exactly how I'm spending food. But we can go further than this. We can break this down and we can look at budgets. Once everything's categorized, we can set budgets for this. I mean, if there's not a category on there for, say, pocket money, just add a category. You can, tra you can drag the transactions into the category. And just in future, all of those types of transactions will go there, which is absolutely fantastic. So we can see here exactly how everything's broken down. So I can see exactly how much I'm spending per day. And we can sort of gamifying all of this for people. It becomes a real, real chat, a real sort of point of pride when you start hitting your, hitting your budgets. So on my budget, I know I'm a little bit over on my transport today, so, well, on this month. So what I, what I found is I need to basically stop eating out a little bit more this month because I've been a bit excessive at the start of the month. And it makes me really want to actually, actually reduce my budget. So, I'm going to be £40 over this month, unfortunately. So that's, I'm going to have to find £40 of savings just so I can meet all of my commitments. So I've got guilt, a bit of guilt already that I've spent a bit too much. So I know that I need to change my behavior. And having that is very, very efficient. It's very effective. Not only that, we can take that and we can provide nudges to people. We can say, actually, it looks like you've spent a bit more than usual this month on, say, eating out. And we can actually modify that behavior. And we can promote the right behavior in the right way. Obviously, different things will work for different people. But I found personally that I check this every day just to go over my finances, make sure there's nothing untoward on there. And I found, really, I know, I, I know where I can cut back and I can make those savings. This is all linked to my goal. So what I can do is I can select, I can select a goal and I can just, I can, any savings at the end of the month, I can just squirrel away into my ISA, my pension, anything, anything I want. And we can do that from a pound. So if there's a few pennies every day, as soon as it hits a pound, we can put those away for you. At the end of the month, if it's not a pound, we'll just roll it over to the next month. But also, as I said, what we can do with this, every single penny on every single transaction for every bank account that's linked, we, we can round those up and we can put those away for you. So every day, for me personally, works out to be about £12 a week. It's about £1.70 a day. That's £50 a month or £600 a year. And it means for me, when I hit retirement, that's an extra £150,000 in my pension pot. That's the power of technology. How fantastic is that? Without even realizing, just by going about my day, just by grabbing, grabbing some lunch, by getting on a tube, filling up my car, I know my retirement's taken care of and I don't even have to worry or think about it. That's the power of technology. <coughs> but we can use this technology to accumulate a pot, but that's only one side of the coin. When it comes to decumulation, once you've managed to squirrel away all of these pennies over the course of your life, you get to 67, finally you retire. Technology plays a huge role in this as well. So what we've got now is we've got pension freedoms. Clients now have more power. They've got more control and more flexibility in how they access their pot. So now more than ever, how can we ensure that clients don't do all of this? They go out of their way, they save up for 45 years to reach retirement, and then they go buy a Ferrari and it depreciates and they're absolutely lost and they don't know what to do. So technology, again, plays another huge role. So if we go back to the slides, we can see that in this case, the holy grail of this technology would be something like cradle to grave financial planning solution, something that enables you to see everything, so your assets, your liabilities, your cash flow, all in one place, on demand, at the press of a button. So you can see where you are against where you want to be. So you know exactly what decision you need to make and when. So as many of you are aware, HMT and the DWP have the pensions dashboard project. Now this is a fantastic idea and an amazing piece of technology, if it really happens. So as many of you are aware, there's currently doubt on whether or not the project will be delivered in 2019. And at true, at true potential, we're not taking any risks. So we've already built our own. We're an investment platform, so we can leverage our own technology and we can utilize our existing data integrations. So we can pull all of our clients, we can pull all of their investments, their ISA, their pensions from other providers, their, their bank accounts, everything into one place. We have thousands of clients already using this technology, knowing that simply every day when they wake up, 
just by going to the shop, going out with the friends, filling up the car, everything's taken care of. They don't even have to worry. If they fall behind on their, on their goal, we can send them a little nudge, get back on it. Pounds and pennies really do help, literally by flicking a switch, and they can just leave it, and it just runs on autopilot. It's simple, it's effective, it's unique, and that's the power of technology and finance. Thank you very much.